Oh, hello there! Welcome again to the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling show. I'm the one and only Hobo Tom. And pretty soon there's going to be some changes because eventually I am going to make one general introduction and just play it throughout. The start of every video like I did in the endings of my videos. Again, I'm very slowly learning production. Even though I have no formal training. And I'd rather play with my cat. And I have to do laundry. And I have to be up at 2.30 in the morning. So I was goofing around with video editing stuff. So. Good morning, everyone. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And let's just start off because this is another long week of wrestling for us. Again, very typically my schedule. Monday night, Tuesday morning, you get a Monday Night Raw review where I've watched Raw, been able to synthesize it. I even take notes on it, Give you, tell you what I thought of it. I do the same thing for SmackDown on Tuesday. And then because the 14th is a special day, it's Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. I hate Valentine's Day. Gonna have a special all woman. This one goes out to all the ladies. Wrestling special on over on WWE 2K17, which is going to focus mainly more so on Daytona Beach Bum Fight League wrestling and a few superstars, just because I don't have time to make so many. I could, but way too long. And then hopefully I'll be back live streaming on Sunday. The 17th, that, that is going to be the Elimination Chamber. And I'm only about a month and a half away. Actually, I'm honestly only a month from my one-year celebration. I've been on YouTube. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. Time does fly, I guess. And again... WrestleMania season needs means I get another wrestling t-shirt. This time another Macho Man shirt. Macho Man still is the best shirt. But let's, now that all the nonsense is over, again, you can always like, share, comment, and subscribe. You can also email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. And if you do send an email, comment, or a subscription, you get a little video in honor of you. My camera's logging. Done, done too much stuff today. There we go. So let's talk about some Raw. Uh, this was a pretty interesting show. Very wrestling heavy, which is good. I don't like what was in the main event spot. I'll get to that. So the show starts off with uh, Stephanie and Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Oh, gonna have, we're going to have this again. The authority figure. And it shows highlights of what happened between Stephanie and Becky, as well as Hunter Hearst Helmsley, or Jean Paul Levesque, or Mr. Levesque, or Paul Levesque, depending how you know him as. And Becky Lynch. And then, of course, Becky Lynch interrupts with her music, because the WWE knows. And I think sometime in March is going to be Triple Mania. Last year's Triple Mania was, was a botch-filled Triple Mania. And just for that, I want to see what it's like. Again, I think one of those things on my bucket list to do is to go see a Lucha Libre wrestling match in Mexico. They sell out huge arenas. They have a hundred thousand dollar prop budget 
I had ten thousand dollar production budget. That sounds about right. But again, that should be interesting. So Becky Lynch's music hits, and of course Becky Lynch shows up. Um, she is now medically cleared to wrestle, and told all she has to do is apologize. Say you're sorry, and you have a WrestleMania match. But you know what Becky said? First, she looked very pouty, and pouty Becky. Cute Becky. But she still has a way too much makeup. I know it's light production. See this? This is all natural. And lights suck. It's normally the natural lights better, but not at 2.44 in the morning. But she just looked orange. Like, just not her hair either. Well, I don't have any hair, but that's the other issue. That's my own issue. But her face looked orange. Not a good look. Sundays, they do not get that right. And you know what she said to that? Oh, hell no! A la Stone Cold ask. So we'll see what happens. Especially on this show. Um, then it was Sasha Banks. It was a six, it was a uh, tag team triple threat match with the three raw competing women or teams going up for the tag team belts on elimination, on elimination chamber on the seventeenth. Yes, the teams of the Boss and Hugs. Uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey versus the Rise Squad of Liv Morgan and Sarah Morgan. And then you have Nia Jax and Tamina. It was okay. Sarah Logan, here's some advice for you. Don't headbutt us Owen. Trust me. Again, Sarah Logan tried to headbutt us Samoan. Not smart. Let's go back to those Kentucky woods. That was a better gimmick than the Vikings. Vikings just seem they would have tough heads. Not against the moon, so. Tamina still looks like a Klingon. I have to put a graphic of that. Um, Sasha Banks was knocked up for most of the match. And there are rumors that Banks is nursing some in some that, that, that she's hurt, a little beat up. And in the sports world, there's two phrases. You are hurt or you are injured. You're hurt, go on with it. You're injured, you have to stop. But I think she's just hurt. She's just sore. And the bump she takes and what she does always makes me cringe. Anyway. So for the most part, Banks is out of the match, and it's just Bailey versus everyone. It was a good match. Now the Riot Squad, they they're really gelling as a tag team. They figured out to cut the ring in half. They take uh, advantage of the five count. They do. They always double team whenever they tag in and out. They really they really have that classic tag team chemistry going. Which is good. Uh, Tamina and Nia Jax, they just beat up people. Um, Bailey does clean house, though. But you know who won? Nia Jax won. You know who tag team belts then. And for the most part, this was a this was a fun match. This was a good quality cheeseburger match. I'll give it that. Then we had an Elias uh, segment. Elias comes out, um, starts to run down Grand Rapids, Michigan. Yeah, I think they're in Grand Rapids. I honestly forget. I forget if it's I forget if Grand Rapids is in Michigan or the Dakotas. How would they go to the Dakotas? Ugh. No, it has to be Grand Rapids, Michigan. At least I think so. There are a lot of places actually in Grand Rapids. Yeah, I looked it up once. 
Uh, he starts to run down Grand, Grand Rapids, and hey, that's, he's back to heal Elias. Lucha House Party then came out. Callisto's, Callisto's really good on the guitar. Granted, I know one tune on the guitar, and that's Nirvana's Plateau. He was busting it out. He impressed Elias. He impressed Grand Metal League and Lindsay Dorado. And they are, they're all sporting beards now. You can tell they're a little scruffy looking around that chin part of the mask. Even Elias was impressed. He was so impressed he found a second guitar and decided to walk Lisa with it. So we're going to have Elias eventually versus all three members of Lucha House Party. Why is my computer screen seem crooked? Uh oh. Okay. That looks a little bit. I don't know. It just might be the angle, and I have wires all over the place. It's an optical illusion. Yes. And then you have the next match is Finn, vis Finn Balor versus Drew. I'm actually, um, during the last, they, they had a lot of weird promos. Like a lot of them were in picture in picture. Finn's giving Becky, Finn Balor is giving Becky Lynch some advice, which makes sense because I want to say Finn Balor actually trained Becky Lynch. Or at least Becky Lynch went to Finn Balor's gym. In Ireland. Again, Finn's giving rather professorial advice. I'm not going to tell you what to do. This is this me. Very, very mentor student type relationship. And all Becky and Becky's response. Is that your abs are, are still amazing. Becky wasn't listening again whatsoever. We all know what was on Becky's mind, folks. Dirty Becky. Shame. Finger wag of shame. Thinking dirty thoughts of that of your mentor. Yes. Well, with uh, Finn Balor versus Drew McIntyre, it was pretty good. It was a, it was a quick match. Only be oh, and uh, this is the only reason why. Raw seems like such a slog is that the middle part just goes on forever. Uh, Finn controlled most of the match. And as he was he's beating up Drew, Bobby Lashley was ringside. So, of course, Bobby Lashley gets involved. Bobby Lashley and Drew beat up Finn. So, of course, that's going to bring out Angle. When Angle's there, then, of course, that's going to bring out Baron Corbin. And then Braun Strowman shows up. And it's a holla holla ham sandwich. Match. And of course, it brings out a holla holla six man tag match, which is actually pretty good. It was Finn Balor, Kurt Angle, and Braun Strowman versus taking on. Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre, and Baron Corbin. Um, it really shows off Finn's speed, though. Um, it really highlighted Finn Balor a lot. Braun Strowman was more in the background. Even the heels were uh, Bobby Lashley, Baron Corbin, and Drew McIntyre kind of stay in the background. They really focused. Uh, focus. Whoa, that's a new word. Showcase the focus on Finn Balor. Just making up words now. Okay. I should copyright that. Make some money off someone that used the words focused. That'd be cool. Um, Kurt Angle still can wrestle in the ring. He can still uh, do all his move sets. Um, again, Bobby Lashley's so good. Drew's so good. Baron Corbin's a, a very good complimentary player. Especially these six man tag matches. My only thing with Baron Corbin is that you know his moveset, and it's just very repetitive. Where even Bobby Lashley, every so often, pulls up something new. Drew has the same moveset, but varies it up enough so it's not really the same. 
all the time. Ben's been busting up that I think like one new move or or series of combos. That's pretty cool. Kurt Angle's Kurt Angle. The fact that he's back wrestling, a lot of people didn't get to see him in the past. He knows how to German suplex the angle slam ankle lock. Punch some guy and put a headlock in. That's all he needs to know. Especially at his age. I would like to say, Baron Corbin was being very gingerly when he had him in that kind of like weird key lock neck, neck thing where he kind of has the arm up pushes that and like pulls the chin. He really wasn't pulling on that chin. He just kind of had that hand there, and, and I'm sure, and I'm sure Kurt really appreciates that. Uh, for a while, again, it was pretty good. The heels do take control, just like the heels do. They eventually did knock Braun Strowman out after he got, well, well, before he got a chance to tag in. And for a while, it was Finn versus all three of them. Um, of course, the crowd is going to get behind Braun Strowman. Because Braun Strowman, again, has gone to that well too often of just kind of running around and, and running over people. It worked the second time. <laughs> when he hit it the second time, he ran into both Bobby Lashley and Leo Rush. Leo Rush went flying back, arms flayed out, tossed the IC belt somewhere. I'm actually shocked the IC belt didn't wind up in the crowd. So that was that was fun. Um, and then of course Finn Balor picked up the win. It was a Masha Slam. He had a stiff looking coup de gras on Bobby Lashley. That was pretty stiff. This was actually pretty fun. This was a good cheeseburger match. Then we have a quick Kevin Owens promo. He's bowling. He gets the counter ball. Um, backstage, Becky tries try, tries to give him an interview. They're really trying to turn Becky into a female Stone Cold. It could possibly work for her. This is where it couldn't work. Is if they really force it. If you try to force the issue, the crowd's going to poo-poo all over it. None of your damn business. Let, let her be, let Becky be Becky. Um, then we had Nikki Cross versus Ruby Wright. And this was an okay match. It got interrupted a lot by a Becky Lynch backstage with Ronda Rousey. It just made this match seem choppy. Kind of hard to follow. Ruby R Riot in white with a long, dark, purplish red hair. That's a pretty good look for her. Mm. I do. Oh, and I do. And she has a cute little muffin top, too. Nikki Cross is Nikki Cross. Um, Nikki Cross is. Now a job or two. But I guess she's on TV more than Sandy is. Not too sure they really want to do that with Mickey Cross. Having her crazy woman. She can lose matches. The thing is, Nikki Cross should l never lose a match cleanly. It should be because she gets DQ'd. Because she, like, I don't know, like, like, takes a camera and starts to choke out her opponent with a camera. It should o always be something weird. Oh, that, that would be good for Nikki Cross. She has to take one of Corey Graves' energy drinks, hit it over the head of her opponent, and just start to drown her in Red Bull. Again, if you get that idea... All I ask for is five cents and no more copyright violations. So it was good. Um, it really featured Ruby Riot a lot more than Nikki Cross, considering Ruby Riot's been there longer. Nikki Cross is a call-up. 
It was a good ham sandwich match. Again, it just didn't f Nikki Cross that much. And Nikki Cross is joining Sanity in the Jobber role. Then we have a Seth, a Seth Rollins promo. Again, eventually he gets interrupted by Paul Heyman. Then Dean, Dean Ambrose comes out, kind of just sits there and says, Dean, I'm on your side on this. Whoop the beast. Dean's Dean, I don't know. Dean seems like half checked out. And then, of course, this led to then a Dean Ambrose versus an EC3 match. Ethan Carter the third. And Renee Young said some stupid stuff. And if you say dumb stuff, I'm gonna call you out on it. He's like, well he's EC3. Where's EC1 and EC2? And Renee just no wonder why Corey Graves gives you so much garbage, junk, and rundowns. You deserve it after that dumb one. And there's also an Iconics, and, and they work their butts off. I like to add that they probably work their cute butts off. <laughs> um, this was uh, the Dean Ambrose EC3 match, back to what I should be talking about. It was a pretty good match. Um, Ethan Carr the third really shut off what he can do in the ring. He has so much more personality though. They're just they seem like they're really just trying to hold back, and that's not really helping him. You have to just say, "Hey, you've been through Impact TNA, you've done this before, you know what to do." Um, EC three is the victim of a roll up. Which is never good if you're a new call up. Because it was a roll up win, it's really just a can of soup match. And in what should have been in the main event, granted it was right before the main event slot. You have Bobby Roode and Chad Gable versus the revival of Dash and Dawson. This was an amazing match. They could have done this on a pay-per-view, and it would have made that feel so much more special. And It actually made this Raw feel special. Revival, again, they're such a classic tag team. They know how to cut the ring off in, they know how to cut the ring off in half. They know how to double team. Uh, Corey Graves constantly said, oh, they study teams like, like the Freebirds, the Von Erics. Really bring up the old school classic tag teams probably from that rock, rock and wrestling 80s. Well, even before that, probably like the, uh, the 70s and 60s. Again, the Von Erics, the Freebirds. Um, I think those are the ones he mentioned, but I can still go back. I remember the Killer Bees. Again, think about some of the 80, classic 80s tag team, Demolition, uh, Road Warrior, Legion of Doom, Road Warrior Animal, Hawk, the Heart Foundation, the British Bulldogs. Again, the real classic tag teams. Um, and, and, and Gable and, and Ruder are good. Gable showed off his speed. He's really fast. He can still do the flippy, flippy stuff, which is always fun to see. Um, Bobby, Bobby Rude, very much more classically trained mat technician. Those two are a really good, ma good match. And maybe we'll get a breakup of the two and split them off. You never know. We'll, we'll see. Uh, and then again, the revival. They know how, they know how to use it. Five count. They always don't have a double team move ready whenever they tag. Masters of the blind tag. So the opponent doesn't know who's in, who's out. Uh, Bayou, Bayou to get a hot tag. Again, just to work with these teams, 
this is really the best tag team match seen probably on on Raw for a long time. Uh, with SmackDown, they have some pretty good tag matches with the Usos. This was new original. I'll tell you what, this was a flaming match. And then kind of the last, I guess, main event segment. I guess this is the only problem I have with this show is that this is it. That Becky Lynch came out, Steph and Triple H came out. Becky's like, I'm sorry. Then Ronda Rousey came out. Yeah, put my towel up in there. But Vince McMahon comes out. You're not the man. I'm the man. And just to make this a true special event, Charlotte Flair is being inserted via triple threat match. So, uh, I, I guess they're going, they're riding that stone cold wave. We shall see what happens. That was a Monday Night Raw. And overall, again, the way Monday Night Raw suffers, beginning is good, end is good. The middle is eh. And that was it. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Oh, I don't have to say that anymore. Have a good night, folks. Bye.